So it's a day that ends with the letter Y, so you know what that means, there must be a government corruption, sleaze, cronyism sort of scandal, so let's talk about it. Um, Peter Crudas um, is a lord, right, he's in, he's in the House of Lords, um, and he was made a lord, and by Boris Johnson specifically, the, uh, the House of Lords Appointment Commission said that he failed their, uh, their vetting tests, so the, the vetting process... He didn't pass that. Um, however, Boris Johnson overruled them to make him um, a lord. The guy uh, founded CMC Markets and he's a former Tory treasurer who's given millions to the Conservatives over the years and donated quite a lot of money to the Vote Leave campaign. So he's had a lot of financial influence over British politics for, for quite some time now. And the, uh, the chair of the House of Lords Appointments Commission, Paul Bew, said it was the first occasion the body's advice hadn't been followed. Um, and according to, to the Mirror and this, this great article that they've done on it, and I would um, give that a, a read, we'll link it in the description. Um, it's understood members pointed to court action, which followed Lord Crudas being filmed talking about donations in a Sunday Times newspaper sting in 2012. 2012 when he was a Tory treasurer so clearly the guy is at least a little bit dodgy there's literally been a sting on him before by the, the Sunday Times um, and that was only in 2012 so that was you know sort of relatively recent um, but that's all but that's all you know pretty sketchy um, however it doesn't kind of scream outright corruption but then it turns out that he donated £500,000, his largest single donation yet, to the Tories just a few days after being made a Lord, after Boris Johnson overruled the House of Lords Appointment Commission to make sure that he would be a Lord. So, look, this is just another example of so many that we see all the time where a really, really wealthy individual, this guy's a billionaire, right, a really, really wealthy individual wants something. Either they get it first and then just magically a short period of time after the government, uh, or should say the Conservative Party, gets a massive financial contribution for them, from, <clears throat> from them. Or it's the other way around and they get a massive financial contribution from them. And then just magically a short while after, might be a few days, might be a month, you know, whatever it is, uh, they suddenly have this very important position. You know, and that time and time and time and time again, you know, conservative donors have been given over 800 million pounds in COVID contracts. And we wonder why our track and trace system is still pretty abysmal. You know, we wonder why that so often it seems like even when the government now is committing to putting a lot more funding into different public services and things and utilities and all this stuff. It's still not up to snuff. And the reason is, I mean, you know, A, it takes a long time to reverse this level of austerity. But B, a lot of it isn't really public services. It's giving contracts to private corporations that actually don't know what they're doing because they're governed by and owned by and managed by people who aren't really very knowledgeable in this sector they don't really know what they're doing this guy shouldn't be a lord doesn't matter right dido harding shouldn't be in in charge of track and trace circle shouldn't be anywhere near that time and time we know matt hancock's neighbor you know all these people it's very clear that the only reason they're qualified for these very important jobs let's be clear especially things like track and trace i mean my god you know, this, this this can save lives on a massive scale, as we've seen in countries which have a successful track and trace system, like uh, South Korea and Germany and uh, Norway, I believe, and I think Japan did as well. Um, so the only thing that qualifies them is just the pure and simple fact that they are donating money to the Conservative Party, right? That's the only thing. Now, yeah, maybe they have experience in business and all this stuff. And yeah, maybe this guy has donated some money to charity. And maybe he's, you know, he's, uh, he's been quite a successful businessman at times. But he failed the vetting process. This is the first time ever that it hasn't been, their advice hasn't been followed, actually, the House of Lords Appointment Commission. 
So there's there's kind of there's two ways of of objecting to this and two ways that we can try and curb these kind of issues. First off, I mean we need to have much much tighter and stricter uh, political financial laws, right? We cannot allow it to be that the ultra wealthy, the super rich, the wealthy and well connected, all of these people can just donate massive amounts of money to political parties and expect favours in return. We cannot allow that to keep happening. We have to move more to a situation where I actually really like the policy that um, Andrew Yang proposed in the, uh, the 2020 election. And that was democracy dollars, right? Where everyone gets a hundred of, you know, he said a hundred dollars, it could be like 50 pounds in the UK. And you can spend that only on political stuff, right? It can't be switched out for anything else. And therefore, the amount of money that the, the ordinary people have that they can donate is far exceeds the amount of money that ultra wealthy people have. I think that's a good idea. Also, massively reduce the amount of money that anyone, any one entity or any one person can <clears throat> can donate to a political party in, to like a thousand pounds in 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 one go, right? Because this 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 guy's five hundred thousand pounds. That is massive, and that only makes up about I think about uh, well several million pounds that he has that he's donated. The Tories received about six point three million in donations between January and March. You know this is. This is astronomical. So we need to we need to really curb that by making campaign finances much, much stronger. And our elections need to be even more publicly funded. And at least we have elements of that, whereas in the US it's much more privatized. Um, but we need it to be even even better. Um, we need a lot more anti-corruption watchdogs and anti-cronyism, um, like independent services like that. Um, the media needs to call this stuff out a lot more. Um, and it needs to, they need to try and make sure it cuts through, right? A guy was made a lord against the advice of the House of Lords Appointments Commission. And then afterwards, he donated £500,000 to the Conservative Party. He's essentially bought a place in the House of Lords. The second thing is, 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 the, is the much more kind of specific and, and niche of those. And that is abolish the House of Lords. Jesus, what is the point? You know, we should, we, without a doubt, we should have an elected, uh, an elected second chamber. I think we should have an elected Senate of the regions and nations, right, to make sure that everywhere is represented. That Scotland, Northern Ireland, um, Wales, you know, every every country, as well as of course England, um, but the but the different regions of England of England as well. You know, I'm from the northeast. It often feels like the northeast is totally ignored. I know people feel like that round here. I know people feel like that in the northwest. I know people feel like that all over the place around the UK. We need to do something about that. So, what, 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 what this kind of this what this whole situation shows us is that there are certainly situations where in life you can get ahead, right? Things aren't that bad, you know? Of course, you can improve your situation. But only if you are demonstrably loaded, right? If you are ultra wealthy and you have some very powerful friends and connections, that's when, that's how you can, how you can do well. And so, and so everyone else, you know, as studies have shown, upward social mobility is essentially non-existent in the UK now. So everyone else is just left by the wayside. Meanwhile, the friends and the, the, the donors of the Conservative Party are getting more money, are getting these nice cushy positions, are getting these huge lucrative COVID contracts. Just because corruption exists in this country and it's very normalised. We have to do something about it. And quite frankly, the Labour Party isn't offering any solutions because... They're pretty corrupt as well. So God help us. <laughs> Sorry to be so depressing. Um, but just look out for these things and educate yourself and educate other people. And, you know, watch independent media like this and, you know, other stuff on Demographic and Network. And hopefully we can start, you know, turning heads 
um so people actually start noticing this stuff and uh at least one of the major political parties decides no we're going to stand up to it thank you very much for watching everyone uh if you enjoyed the video if you liked it you know then why not translate that into a digital form and click the like button or you know even better if you're feeling extra wild subscribe and click the bell